Live from the J.C. Newman Cigar Studios in the great state of New Hampshire and the Gurkha Cigar Studios in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. Welcome to the Smoke and Tobacco Show with your hosts, Matt Tobacco and Kevin Acuff. <sighs> it's good to be back. It's good to be back. It has been a couple weeks. We, um, we actually didn't do a show last week just because of travel and all of that nonsense. Not for Kevin, obviously. Um, but, uh, it just, it, it, last week was just a busy week getting back from the trade show. So, um, we, we didn't actually quite make it for our show, but we're here now. So welcome back two weeks later. Um, I'm at tobacco from smoking tobacco.com and I am joined once again by my very good friend, Mr. Kevin Acuff of fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. What and has happened, Mr. Matthew? Oh, you know, it's, it's another great night, you know, um, getting to smoke some cool cigars some new some new products which we're going to talk about um with the guy who makes them and um but no really quickly uh, i just want to do a quick recap before I, I i get to that um we'll probably end up covering this on the next spare notes episode but uh pca 2024 was last week in las vegas and we were all there and uh it was a great time there's a lot of takeaways from that trade show. Obviously, I don't have time to get really into that tonight, so I won't. But we will be covering it on Spare Notes, which I think is this weekend. Um, should be. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of things there. I was on How About That Cigar the other night. We I answered some, some questions on that show, but I'm going to probably do something a little bit more in-depth with Coop and Kevin. And uh, also a couple of beefs. A couple of beefs I had with the trade show. Um, some of it with PCA, gotta be fair. Some of it with, uh, some manufacturers. Um, uh, but you know, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that in spare notes. Spare notes is the, is the form for that. So stay tuned if you're looking for some, some good stuff. Don't worry. There's plenty of good stuff, but you know, there might be some, uh, might be some, might be some shit there too. Um, just hey, going to warn people. You got to have the good with the bad, right? <laughs> you do. I mean, you can't, you know, that's just how it goes. Um, but anyway, you're guys. Shit, you got to have a little, you got to end up on a positive note, right? That's, yeah. That's just the way it works. I promise to start good, get into the shit, and then end on a good note again. That's usually <laughs> what I like to do. You go, good, shit, and then end good. So that's, that. you know, and, and it works for us. And, you know, I think, you know, we all kind of do the same thing. So, um, but anyway. We have a great guest with us tonight. He's making his debut on our show. This is a guest I've wanted to have on for a long time. Uh, I, everybody knows who this guest is. I mean, I think so. If you don't, and you smoke cigars all the time, then I don't know. I don't know what you're doing, but you need to get your fucking life together and figure it out. Um, because I, I don't yeah, know how I mean, you don't know this guy. <laughs> I mean, I mean, what is it? You live under a rock. You live under a rock. You had a rocky start to uh, your entry say, into the cigar pretty, world. <laughs> that was a pretty that, that, that was a pretty uh, rocky intro. That was a very rocky intro. I'm I'm not gonna lie. It was it was it got a little rocky there. But anyway, we have with us the one, the only, Rocky Patel of Rocky Patel Premium Cigars. Rocky, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Kevin. Great to join you guys and. Uh, can't believe uh, I'm the fledgling and I haven't been here for a long time, but very excited about this evening. Yeah, I, I, I'm very excited. Like I said, I'm very excited to have you on the show. I've wanted to have you on the show for a long time. Um, you know, I, you know, I consider you one of the greats, um, as many do. And uh, obviously, the opportunity to have a cigar and a conversation is uh, is awesome. So, um, very excited for have you here. I'm also, I, I don't, Kevin, I has a newer cigar of yours but i have some of the newest cigars of yours so this would be really cool because there's a lot of cool stuff we can talk about and um i'll get into that in quite a, in in, in, a, in a uh, sorry i can't talk today it's been one of those days uh and in, in, in just a moment but i do have a couple of things we have to uh we have to read off first and then uh we'll kind of get into it the first things first we're going to talk about what we're smoking um, and we'll kind of get into what they are after. But, Rocky, you are the guest. I'm going to let you go first. But our cigars tonight are brought to you by the number two, GuysCigars.com. That's right, the number two, GuysCigars.com. If you head over there today, you'll find an amazing selection of cigars and cigar accessories from the cigar industry, including especially Rocky Patel Premium Cigars. Um, and that's at the number two, GuysCigars.com. Rocky, what are you smoking with us tonight? So I'm actually smoking a Conviction right now. 
Ooh. Uh, believe it or not, I'm in Naples, Florida, and we just got done hosting a cigar dinner at a private golf course called Naples National. Ooh. We had about 68 people here. My brother's still inside entertaining them. Had a beautiful dinner, two, three cigars. And uh, this is my uh, third cigar of the night. I started with the white label, moved on to a 60, and now I'm finally enjoying one of the rare, great new cigars that we're making called Conviction. Well, Kevin, um, I think you and Rocky have something in common tonight. I think we do have something in common because uh, I, too, am smoking the Conviction. Nice, Kevin. The, uh, the first one you smoked? It is the first one I smoked. Um, was was actually very, very uh, just, wow. This thing is so good, Rocky. I think that's my best work yet. I can tell you that, you know, my favorite part about the cigar industry is blending. And people always ask me, do you guys master blenders? Do you, uh, I said, absolutely not. Since I started in 1995, 96, I've been blending cigars. Every single brand, every single cigar we've ever launched, I've blended myself. So, you know, that's one thing I very much enjoy. I enjoy cooking. I have a passion for taste. I think I have a good palate. And I love working with different tobaccos from around the world and creating blends. And we'll make 100, 120 blends, narrow it down to three. And then I'll change the primings. I'll change the binder. Sometimes it gets better. Sometimes it gets worse. And then it's a waiting process because when you smoke a fresh cigar, it tastes totally different than you let the cigar rest for three to four months. And then certainly less, let it rest for another year. So the cigar gets better, sometimes it gets worse, and it, it's, a, it's a long, long process, but it's a fun process. And when you find that cigar and you go, wow, this is unique, this is different, this is special, and you usually come down to one or two or three blends that stand out, and you go, this is different than everything I've had, and I think the Conviction's got that rich character, it's got that lingering sweetness, that we're trying to mm -hmm. accomplish with the old Cubans of 20 years ago. It's got that balance. And so I think it's something very, very special. It is definitely silky smooth and flavorful. And I mean, it's, you can tell there was a lot of care that went into this and you can tell that there's older tobacco, like very well aged tobacco in it just to, yeah, so it's got our original tobaccos when we first started growing in Esteli and Cordega from 2014. Ironically, uh, I was at the factory a few years ago and we were doing inventory and we're stretched out among 12 different buildings. We're working on building a new factory. Uh, we're breaking ground in May and try to put everything under one roof. And, you know, this boutique factory just kind of exploded and we started growing so much tobacco and without tobacco and without having those resources, it's impossible to make great consistent cigars. So I've been a big fan of farming and cultivating our own tobacco and having the opportunity to cure it ourselves, ferment it ourselves. And we grew on virgin soils in the heart of Esteli. And, and, and I said to Milka, I go, what's this? I can't believe we got tobacco from 2014. I thought we would use it. He goes, nah. We haven't used it all. There's these bales. I said, well, let's create this unique project. And at the time, with the lack of Cubans in the market, the Europeans were screaming for like a high-end, luxurious product. Because if you think about it, I wanted duty-free stores in London and Frankfurt. I wanted the Davidoff store in London. I wanted J.J. Fox. And they were selling bahiques for a Robusto for 430 pounds, a Toro for 560 pounds for a cigar, not a box. And they were like, oh, come shit. on, we need a $100 cigar. We, had a, we need a $100 cigar. And I was so against it, I was like having diarrhea going, a $100 cigar? So I've got to come up with something special. So we came out with packaging that screams luxury, but at the end of the day, the cigar had to back up the quality, the taste, and flavor profile and have that. So when we found these tobaccos and we found like a really old age a uh, wrapper from San Andreas that we originally bought, some binders that were like broadleaf and hamastron, 
and, and just really stuff that we've collected for a long time. And then we aged the cigars for a year and a half, two years after we rolled it. I said, this is special. And so this is uh, what we're smoking now. So if you get the opportunity, our fellow listeners out there, I know it's not an affordable cigar for an everyday cigar, but for a special occasion, if you're celebrating something, you have a fabulous dinner, try Conviction. I promise you, you're going to fall in love with it. Very well yeah, said. That's exactly, that's exactly why I chose it tonight. I figure, you know, Rocky's first time on the show with us. I mean, what better way to ce- celebrate the man than, uh, you know, to smoke his first, you know, first Night. deep dive into a cigar like this. And I got to <laughs> tell you guys, it's like, you know, these aren't these, these cigars aren't sponsored. At least my cigars here aren't sponsored. And it's worth every penny. So. Well. I am smoking. I'm not smoking a conviction, and I'll be honest with you, I have not had the conviction yet. But what I am smoking tonight is, and Rocky, I don't know if I don't know if these have shipped yet, but I did get this at the trade show from your brother, uh, the Rocky Patel Gold Label, which I was one of the cigars um, that you did showcase last week at PCA 2024. Um, this is uh, so far. I just lit it up, and it, it's very good. A lot of pepper up front. And uh, then it just kind of mellowed in a little bit. But I'll tell you, great draw, construction, a lot of flavor. A lot of flavor right out of the gate. Um, just everything about this cigar is just very uh, very exciting, I have to say. And, and, you know, one of the things I will say, look, you've been around a long time. You've been a lot of cigars. And there's a lot of brands that people have been smoking for many, many years. And... But I do feel like, and Mitchell, Mitchell, uh, who's also on our team, commented this a few minutes ago. The last couple of years, I mean, you have really put out some, some, some screaming hits with the products you've brought to the market. I mean, my mind first goes back to the 60. So far to date, and I've smoked pretty much everything that's been out and almost everything that's come out in the last few years. And I think the 60 was one of my favorites that you've done. We had it on our list a few years ago when it came out. I think it was like number two or number three. Um, that cigar was really fantastic. The the, mm-hmm. the six the sixty. I mean, I remember smoking that sixty and just taking a step back and being like, "Wow, this this is good." Uh, that cigar blew me away. And today, I think it's my favorite cigar you make. Um, yeah, you know, the- it's my everyday go to cigar. You know, it's. Uh- I can't believe that I'm 60 years old and, you know, it seems like when I started in the business, I was one of the young fledglings. And now it's like when you get a Hall of Fame award from Cigar Aficionado, you know, when the old Bobcats, right? So it's amazing, <laughs> how, fast, it's amazing how fast time has passed us by. But uh, the 60 is truly one of my favorite go-to cigars. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I think what's led to some of our success in the last three years Matthew is all the time and effort we put into farming is finally uh, kind of given us the opportunity to use those great tobaccos from our own farms in Esteli, in Condega, now we have farms in Hamastron and Jalapa that we can actually incorporate those tobaccos with the right amount of fermentation, with the right amount of aging, putting them away for a long time and we're at a point in my life where I like these new little pet projects where we build humidors that can hold three, four million cigars and we put them away after they're rolled for two years. We don't smoke them after three months, six months, eight months. We said, let's try that. We tried that with age limited rare. We did that with the 60, put the tobacco away. Let's come out with fun projects that are really special, that are unique. And so we've had a lot of success with them. I think the 60 is one of my favorite cigars. Uh, the age limited rare is another one. Uh, I think the Disciple, the DBS, the White Label, uh, it's very hard to make a mild cigar that has character and balance, right? So uh, it's easy to make a powerhouse and a full body cigar in Nicaragua, but to take those tobaccos that are so, so rich and uh, in character and make a blend like a White Label with a true Connecticut, Connecticut shade that is just not smooth but it's got that creaminess and it's got that you know you want to be able 
to, to enjoy it and it's got to be complex and deliver all that character and so yeah uh, you know it's been a lot of hard work it's 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 not something that's just happened automatically it's not a lot of people say well we love your marketing we love your packaging but at the end of the day i just i think the cigars speak for themselves oh i couldn't agree more rocky i mean you can definitely tell with these blends you know the, the you mentioned the age limited and rare like that's probably one of my all-time favorites from you and you can really tell the the care that went into the blending you know the care that went into the selection of the tobacco and it's not you know some people bring things to market you know as a special edition limited edition whatever that are just something to do and you brought it because you care and you want to put very flavorful cigars in the hands of your consumers and mission accomplished for sure thank you um we are once again using sd dupont to light our cigars tonight our friends at sd dupont be exceptional and shake up the legacy um which i actually i don't have my biggie lighter with me and i brought it to vegas for the trade show and i did not lose it i know i have it because i i know it was here when i got home but somehow it got all shuffled in with a bunch of my cigar stuff that came back down to the cigar room and I don't have it with me and I was looking for it earlier before the show and I don't know where it is it may have made its way back up to my office I don't know so I don't have it with me I did I, it, it's not gone it did make it back I know it made it back I just now I don't know where it is so um, so it's just so it's just somewhere where you don't know where it is. And I just I know so, Les Man is watching too, and I probably shouldn't say that because now Les is probably over there going, "Oh my god!" He's so lost see, the I brought I brought <laughs> I brought my Slimmy to the trade show, and I actually managed to keep track of it and see. Yeah, know, but you live in Las did, Vegas; you didn't have to travel and all of that. So it's like you know, mm -hmm. yeah, you didn't Listen, have luggage. It's the hard thing to keep track of these lighters. <laughs> I mean, we'll be sitting around a group of people, whether it's a bar whether it's a cigar lounge whether it's at the trade show and invariably invariably every single time these lighters just seem to disappear and then you got to go for this hunt and it's like the hunt for red october it's like <laughs> <laughs> oh, i gave it to that guy and then I, the that guy goes well i gave it to that guy and then it goes i gave it to that guy and then, and then finally that lighter shows up like two days later and you go wait a minute you know, it's it's amazing how these lighters just disappear, and you're just trying to be polite, let people use it, and it's just kind of people just kind of automatically stick it in their pocket, or they're polite enough to lend it to somebody else, and it's amazing how these lighters disappear. I love Les Pan, and I love the SD Dupont lighters; they're great work. Yeah, absolutely. I I, I have with me my line two, which anyone who knows SD SD Dupont is, you know, knows about that ping. Uh, this, is a, this is a classic lighter. Uh, I do have that with me. That is what I used tonight to light my cigar. Um, so just a big thank you to SD DuPont for being with us again and for all the hospitality at the booth last week. I have to tell you, they are some true professionals uh, over there. So thank you very much to them. Well, yes, I see Les throwing some love to Rocky. Yeah, yeah, Les Man is here. Les Man is here. Let me bring that back up. Sorry. I have so much respect for Rocky Patel and how he has grown his brand and all of his passion and energy in the industry, as well as all of his time and efforts in Washington, D.C., always repping the entire cause. And that is such a very true statement. So, um, Thank you, Les. He's one of the best. Uh, he's one of the best all-time scholars in the lighter accessory business, and we love him. And we work on a lot of projects together. And uh, we love Les and all the work he's ever done. He's the man, I'll tell you. He's he's up there on my list of people in the business. He's he's up there, you know. He's he he's he gets he gets shit done too, you know. I, I gotta give it to him. He's, he works hard, you know. Love you, Les. Thanks for being here, buddy. Um, so Rocky, back to you now. Um, you know we talk, You know you guys are smoking conviction. Uh, I'm smoking the the gold label. You know we've talked a little bit about some of the newer projects. Um, I wanted to ask you, as someone who blends cigars, something earlier, and I wanted to just kind of jump on it really quick while it was in my mind. Today's day and age, I know cigar making and blending can be is probably different than it was 
10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, etc. Um, going back, especially like 20 years ago, you know, do you feel that there was a time when, you know, working with Nicaraguan tobacco and, you know, in Nicaragua, you know, the Dominican, you know, everywhere outside of Cuba, right? Was there, was there a period where it just kind of felt like when you were blending cigars with these other tobaccos that the Cuban cigar, the Cuban tobacco and, and, and all those legacy brands that were coming out of it, was that, was that still the benchmark at that time? Like that, like that was the, the blend to beat or that was, you know, like the, the focal point, a lot of people just, whether they knew it or not, was just like when they're in the blending process, that was like, you know, it has to be similar to this. It has to be better than this. Or that was like the focal point. And now it's kind of shifted till that doesn't really matter anymore. Now we just kind of blend whatever is different. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, there's no doubt that Cuban tobacco is unique and distinct. Um, and it's got a, a great character when you get the right Cuban cigar. But I really never looked at Cuban cigars as a benchmark. I thought they were um, overhyped. Uh, the construction and the quality and the consistency of the brands uh, uh, just were mediocre. Um, when you got a good one, they were great. But the taste profile was pretty average. I mean, they're medium bodied, they're mild and medium bodied. The Cuban cigars did have a lingering sweetness that was unique and different than all of the tobacco. So, uh, when I was making blends, I was never aspiring to try to be like a Cuban cigar because I was so, uh, I, I guess, I, I, you know, just disenchanted by the fact that when I went to Cuba and I saw the level of quality control that was lacking and the lack of passion and care for this beautiful artisan family that we call premium cigars, that, you know, to me, it seemed like they were just grabbing the money and they were going after capturing the money based on the brand naming of Cuban cigars. And the tobacco one day came from this farm and then came from this farm and from another farm. And the wrapper that was lighter became a Romeo, a lighter, darker wrapper became a Punch or Cohiba. And I think that the whole myth of people gravitating to towards Cuban cigars was just like people that gravitate towards a fashion brand without really knowing about it. Uh, and so, you know, I, I just was never one of those, the people that I was very proud about that I tried to replicate that I thought were great cigar makers uh, were the Fuente family, the Padron family, uh, you know, people that I respected for generations that make great quality cigars that have pride and passion and the art and what they did. And so uh, at the beginning, it was very, very difficult because I didn't have access to all those great quality tobaccos. Uh, you know, we were just trying to make brands with people and the, I knew how to great palate and I make a great blend and it gave a great rating, but to get that consistency in the manufacturer was very difficult. It wasn't until we took complete vertical control and integration of making cigars starting at the farms to the curing to the fermentation to the construction and when i had the capability of implementing all the strict quality control standards uh, after visiting all these factories around the world you know i wasn't born in a cigar family so i didn't have any habits good or bad i went around the world looked at what people were doing and tried to pick up all the good trades of what they were doing and try to implement the strictest quality controls in manufacturing, curing, farming. And, and when I had that opportunity to have that capability is that's when we changed the name from the brand Indian Tobacco, how we started to Rocky Patel. And so it, for me, it's always been about quality, consistency, construction, um, you know, and obviously flavor. And um, we've been proud of preaching that anytime you smoke a Rocky Patel cigar, the one thing you're gonna get is a very well-constructed, consistent cigar. You can debate whether the flavor profile fits your taste or not, but you know, one thing you're gonna get with our cigar that is perfect in construction, the tobacco is perfectly cured, is perfectly fermented. Every single cigar goes through a draw test machine, the draw is perfect. And so, you know, I was working on being meticulous on the construction of the cigars, 
And then eventually, when we started getting tobaccos from our farms that were old and we could have all these different raw materials that we work with and blends, then we could create unique taste profiles and let the cigars age for a while. And, and so we're just coming into, you know, our stride right now. And I, I think that, you know, we're, 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 we're getting to the stride of where we're taking the brand to the, the next level of, of quality, taste, and consistency. I, I think I think that's very true as an outsider and you know watching the brand smoking the cigars I, I I I think that you know you guys have always done a great job I mean you sell a lot of cigars you're you know Rocky Patel is, is a name that's recognized by so many people I mean when I talk to you know mm-hmm. seasoned cigar smokers you talk to casual cigar smokers even you talk to you know newer cigar smokers who are just kind of getting into it um, you know one of the first names that they know is Rocky Patel um and, and and you know like you mentioned arturo fuente padrone you know those those names that that people know right right off the bat so you've definitely built a legacy on good products because you know people are buying them and smoking them but i agree i i also think that in the last couple of years you know it's been fun to watch because you guys have just kind of gone up to like this whole other level and it mm-hmm. just seems like year after year like it's it's kind of become like what's what's rocky gonna do now because you know, last year was great, but like, you know, what now? And another, you know, another set of products comes out and it's like, damn, um, you know, and smoking the gold label, this is my first one. You know, it, it's, it's there. It's like, wow, this, this is the next hit. Um, I've, you know, I've already texted, I've already texted my retailer, told him I need some, um, because when they, so when Matt they, when they come in, because we had major arguments and debates uh, in our office for about four months because, you know, what price point should we actually sell that cigar for? Because the packages, packaging screams luxury, the cigar smokes great. And, you know, in the last two years, we've been releasing cigars that are in that 16 to $24 price range. And we said, you know, and everyone's like, gosh, you, you got to have this cigar at like 16, 17, 18. It, it's crazy. You know, it's a gold label. It's beautiful. And I said, well, let's just let's just make this one of our value brands. Even though th- we could sell this for eighteen dollars, let's just release this at twelve dollars, twelve fifty. Uh, we want to have a cigar for everybody. Uh, you know, we want to make a cigar that the the regular blue collar working man can enjoy. And so we've tried to diversify our portfolio. So you know, I think that Gold Label is a fantastic cigar, and at that price point. At twelve, twelve fifty, it's a fantastic cigar, and, and so uh, you know we want to cater to everybody. And when we launch cigars, we don't launch them to say, "Oh, what are we going to make? What's the profit? Or what what target we're we going to?" We just come up with blends that we say, "Wow, that's a great blend. Let's introduce it. Let's introduce it." And we want to make sure that everybody can afford our cigars and enjoy our cigars. I agree. That's a great. I was just gonna say, at this price point, I agree. I mean, this this is a fantastic cigar for twelve dollars. I mean, this cigar smokes, you know, much closer to the eighteen to twenty dollar range. I mean, this is this is fantastic. And I, you know, I don't have it with me, obviously, but you know, I've seen the box and the packaging, um, which is is pretty pretty special in itself too. I mean, for you know, for what it is, I mean, the the design elements on it, which that's another thing too with all those products I just talked about. You know, the sixty, the white label, the disciple, and um, you know the gold label, like the 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 packaging work. I mean, you know the uh, the conviction that you guys are smoking. I mean the, the the packaging work. You know, not that you taste the packaging, right? But still, I mean, it's it's part of it's part of it. You know, and and it's it's been very, um, just very sharp and and just right. extra over the top. And it's just it's in the colors, the designs, everything just seems to like fit together nicely. It's not just kind of thrown together and, and it's not gaudy. It's just, it, it's very, um, it really stands out and it pops and, and it's been, it's been nice to see. And, and really, you know, I just want to let all you consumers know that times have changed over the last decade. Uh, you know, when I got into the industry, long filler used to be $3 and 50 cents a pound. Now that filler is ten dollars or fifty cents a pound. Binder used to be four fifty to five dollars a pound. Now binder is twelve fifty a pound. Wrapper used to be 
10 to $12 a pound. Now wrapper goes anywhere from 25 to $60 a pound. And, you know, oh. the, the cost wow. of growing tobacco, the labor costs, the electricity, the fertilizer, uh, everything has gone up substantially in the world. And on top of which, uh, it's the taxes. And so, you know, it's not like we're making all the money. I mean, I remember when we released our Edge, it was a great value cigar for $5.50. I can't sell that cigar cheaper than $8.50. We're not making any more profit. In fact, we make less profit on our cigars. It's the S-chip tax, uh, the federal excise tax. Then you have the FDA. They got their fingers, uh, you know, into the pot. And then you have the state taxation. Uh, it can go anywhere from 50 cents a cigar all the way to 70 percent, 80 percent, depending on New York or California, what Minnesota, what state you're in. So, you know, we are trying to get the cigars out to all of you at the best prices possible. But it's the world that we live in, it's the cost, the taxes, and that's really where the cost of the product is so much more than it used to be years ago. So all the cigar manufacturers out there are training trying to release cigars at a price point you can all afford but unfortunately we have these crazy taxes from the government and of course then we have all the other issues that i talked just talked to you about that make cigars much more expensive than they used to be no it's funny Rocky, that you bring that up because i know you're so involved with you know and even like les said before you know with with a lot of stuff that goes on in washington dc with fda and um just all of the taxes and regulations and um you know when the um substantial equivalence you know kind of first came into play you know I, I know you know you guys were very involved in that and if i remember correctly um before your tobacco days you, you were in law you you were a lawyer is that correct yeah i was a lawyer and you know i had <laughs> no reason to be in politics i had no idea uh to really uh, know how to meet a senator or a congressman. And, you know, all this happened when I found out that the federal government was going to have an S-chip tax that was going to take our, our tax that we're paying for cigars four and a half cents uh, for children's health care, and they wanted to $10 per cigar. And uh, I got freaked out, and I called my friend Jeff Borshowitz from Corona Cigar Company, and I said, Jeff, we got to head to Washington, D.C. I don't know shit about politics. I have no idea how to even get into a, a senator's office or congressman's office, but let's go up there because I smell a rat. And so we went up there, and we were literally sitting in the cafeteria of a senator, uh, senate office at the Coke machine waiting for senators to come by and say, please, senator, senator, I need like 10 minutes of your time. This is about half a million jobs. It's going to destroy all the mom-and-pop retailers around the country. This makes no sense. And the first one was Senator Harkin, who gave us 30 minutes in his office. Then he introduced us to Senator Reed, who is the uh, Senate Majority Leader from Iowa. And that's how the ball started rolling. And we soon realized that there are a lot of the big companies that I won't mention names that kind of wanted this regulation, kind of the Philip Morris mentality, you know, have this regulation that is so overburdensome It'll wipe out 80% industry and there'll be the lone man standing. And then we got in a big debate and ultimately that ended up being 40 cents. Now, I was in the room in the final meeting and we're pushing for 12 cents. And I'm not going to tell you who, but a number of people in the room waved the white flag and agreed to 40 cents when we were fighting for 12 cents. So after that, we had the FDA regulations. It was like thousands of pages of regulation was basically de facto prohibition. The first thing that they wanted was to put 40% of our boxes that expose our family heritage, talk about our vintage tobaccos, just like they do on wines, bottle of bourbon, scotches. And, you know, they wanted to regulate and have these boxes that say they cause cancer, etc. So we took the signs to them and we tried to lobby in Congress. We had three, four different bills go through Congress. We got into the Senate side, and ultimately at the 11th hour, you know, our language would be pulled out by Philip Morris and others uh, because they didn't want us to prevail uh, as premium cigars having a victory versus all of the tobacco products. So we finally went to the courts, 
and the judge ruled in our favor. And they said, Judge Mehta, an Obama-appointed judge, ruled in our favor and said that the FDA has not shown enough evidence that premium cigars possess a public health risk and there's no youth access issues and there's certainly no evidence to show that premium cigars cause cancer. So why would you have them have these crazy warnings on their boxes? So that was a great victory. After that, we filed a second lawsuit where they wanted pre-market review, substantial equivalence, and constituent testing all, all cigars. Well, that rule was really made for cigarette companies because every cigarette has a certain amount of nicotine and tar, and they're made by machines, and you can control the level. Well, cigar cigars are handmade. The way I make cigars versus Padron or Fuente or anybody else, we have a different way of curing the tobacco, fermenting the tobacco. We certainly can control how the cigars are made. We have our own skill set. And, you know, they're used occasionally. They're not used as an addiction like cigarettes again no youth access issues so again the judge ruled in our favor said the burden to the entire industry completely outweighs the benefit you know that you're trying to regulate and against the science shows that there's no reason to have premium cigars treated in a manner like cigarettes and you need a more tailored rule and finally, we filed a third, third lawsuit to get rid of the entire regulation because the FDA had had time to investigate our industry, which they never did. They really wanted de facto prohibition. They just wanted to ban. They didn't look at the science. They didn't want to look at and treat premium cigars differently. And finally, the judge caught on to all of that and said, you guys have had the time to look at premium cigars. You've not treated them. With, you haven't t taken their science seriously. And basically, you're just trying to prohibit premium cigars from existing. And it was a great win for the industry. Now, finally, the Justice Department and the FDA has appealed it. But we feel very, very confident that we're gonna, we'll, we will win an appellate court. And if we won't, we'll certainly win at the Supreme Court level. So, you know, nobody thought that we, from the tobacco perspective, would ever win against the federal court against an administrative agency and it cost us 14 million dollars between the pca and the cra we put up the money most of the family-owned companies put up a lot of money uh, to fight this battle and certainly the big companies and corporations didn't put up any money uh, because they thought there was no chance we'd have this victory so it's kind of a big deal we took the science to them we spent millions of dollars collecting data from New England Journal of Medicine from the FDA's own data, et cetera. And so it's kind of been a monumental victory for us to protect the right and privilege to enjoy this beautiful art form and this artisan industry, cottage industry that we call premium cigars. Well, wow, very well said. I mean, thank, thank you for, for all of that. I mean, that's, um, you know, I don't, I don't think we've actually had anyone on the show who's actually really laid it out all the way like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it, it is, it, and I remember when I started smoking cigars, 2016-ish, um, you know, 17 is when I like really got into it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I remember, you know, spending a lot of time, you know, my, my, my local shop, Two Guys Smoke Shop, I know you know those guys, you know, Dave, um, you know, I, I spent a lot of time with those guys and learning cigars and tobaccos, and then, and then it kind of became like this hey, like, do you know about, like, the FDA? And, like, I started to, you know, hear about all these things. And at the, at the time, it was like, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff that might go away. And, you know, there's this and that. And it, it, it there was just this, this, this feeling of, like, doom and gloom with a lot of people. With, like, hey, like, there's, you know, there's, there's shit going on. And, you know, a lot of manufacturers are trying to prepare. It, you know, it, there's a lot of smaller brands that might get wiped out. You know, it, you know, we, we don't know. You know, we... CRA Matthew, and... trust me, Matthew, trust me, it was doom and gloom. They would have cost a company like mine $80 to comply. And I'm not going to mention names, but I had the CEO of a major corporation in the cigar business. That's a public company. Uh, basically pull me out at their lunch meeting and say, Rocky, I don't understand why you're fighting this. You'll be one of the eight people that will survive. It'll be good for you. So they were looking for this regulation so that it would wipe out 
everybody else and be low man standing. And I said, once you give the government that opportunity and open that window to regulate you, they just keep stockpiling and stockpiling and stockpiling until they wipe you out of existence. Their motive operandi is that anything that burns, they don't care if it's a cigarette or cigar, they don't distinguish the difference, they don't look at the science, they want to wipe us out. And it's a legal product Science has proven that it does not have health impacts on you, the epidemiology, pulmonology, all the stuff. We took it right to them on the science. Even the attorneys at the beginning were not ready to fight them on the science. They said it's very hard to fight an administrative agency on science. And we took it them on science and we won on science. And the facts have been on our side from youth access to everything else that they don't have a leg to stand on. Wow, That's I mean, one of the things that I've noticed, and, and I mean, you know, just myself as a consumer and, and an aficionado of cigars and really appreciate is you guys actually taking the fight and going in with the attitude that we can win this because it just seemed – The confidence. Just, I mean, I mean it may, maybe I'm wrong, but it just seemed there was a lot of people that just kind of discounted it. Well, it's the federal government. We're not going to beat them, so let's just see – what minimal damage can be done and we'll just live with the results and and you guys didn't accept that you guys you know took it oh, to, them, I used to took be, all the facts I used and everything to, be, to it and and yeah. and went hard and heavy and we really appreciate that yes i i remember i used to be at ta meetings the three four in the morning having whiskeys arguing with these guys arguing with my competitors arguing like I'm telling, oh, no, you don't know, Rocky. You don't understand. I come from healthcare, and healthcare, you know, we came with self-regulation. and We told them we're going to do this, and you got to give this up to do this. And I said, once you start giving them an inch, they're going to take a mile. You can't. We've got to fight this and go for the exemption. Mm -hmm. So thank God to the family-owned companies who decided to do this and battle this. And, uh, you know, it's been a good victory for us. You know, Rocky, another thing I'll bring up, you know, you know, while we're on this, this, this topic and specifically about, you know, giving up a little and then they take a mile, the, the whole thing about flavor banning, you know, there's a lot of people who, you know, you hear about, you know, they, they, well, they want to go after flavored tobacco. And there's a lot of people out there who have this attitude of like, yeah, but I don't smoke flavored cigars. So that doesn't affect me. Yes, it does. And yeah, that was the point I was trying to make. It's like, yeah. you can't win. So it's just like, okay, well, we'll give that up to get the other thing. But if you give that up, they're going to come after the next thing anyhow. So you got to fight that too. It doesn't well, matter. I always said to, you know, listen, we make Java. I'm good friends with the people over at Jewish States. And, and I always said the flavors was a non-starter. If we went in to try and protect flavors and tr try and protect the whole family of cigars, there was no chance to win in federal court or with the FDA. And like Senator Reed said, there's one lifeboat. It holds 10 people. If you're going to get 25 people into it, the whole thing's going to drown. And so we wanted to get premium cigars with the definition across the finish line. Once we got premium cigars across the finish line, then we could work on showing that the FDA that premium flavored cigars are also premium cigars that are distinct and, you know, uh, and mm -hmm. different. Uh, they're not, you know, the blunt wraps and they're not the grape and the watermelon and all the other stuff and the apple. And, and, and so those were the bad actors that they were after. And we had to separate ourselves and create a definition from all the other stuff that they're after. And we were getting lumped in together and we need to separate out to show that this cottage industry made by hand, all natural tobacco, 100% long filler was different than the other products. So we had to get that across the finish line before we can work on everything else. Yeah, I, very well said. I mean, and, I, and that's why I, we, we're us, you know, on the show, you know, we talk, when we do talk about this topic, it's always, you know, it's, hey, you know, it's, it's all of it, man. You know, don't, don't, don't give up you know, on certain pieces because maybe you don't think it's important or you don't, maybe it doesn't affect you. It's if it's a cigar, whether you like it, your friend likes it, if it's a premium cigar, it, it needs to be protected at all costs. I mean, because you know, once, oh, 100%. Once, once, yeah, once you give up a little bit, now you're just opening the door to let them in. Um, you know, and, and I, we had Scott Pierce on 
the show right before the trade show and you know we had an interesting conversation with him and uh, i've talked to with other other people in the business and that you know now the the uh, the government's possibly looking at going after the media and trying to you know well let's get rid of the media so we stop the promotion of it and which is also a, a you know a, a scary thought too of of them you know trying to come after people like us who are just love this business and love the cigars and just want to talk about it with people like yourself and they're going to try to come after us to, to, you know, to get to you guys as the manufacturers. And, you know, that's a scary reality as well. Yeah, uh, absolutely. You, know, you guys are great because what you do is you promote and educate, uh, you know, the artisan industry that we have. You talk about the different cigars. You talk about the blends. You talk about the art of making cigars. Uh, you cultivate the audience and to educating them about how to enjoy a cigar, what makes cigars different, why the cigar brands. And I can tell you, there's better cigars being made now than ever in history. Uh, with all our competitors, which I'm very friendly with. Well, yeah, we're, 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 we're competitors, but we're very friendly, but we all are working harder to make better cigars from the fertilization, from the new seed varietals, cross-pollination, everything that we're working on, the science that we're bringing in the industry that was the old industry, everything that we're doing now, I think the consumer is getting a better cigar now than ever in history. I agree. Yeah, no argument there at all. I mean, yeah. the stuff that's coming out, the stuff that's coming out today, I mean, you know, as Matt said, I probably have been in the cigar world price since 2015. And just even in, you know, just the, the less than 10 years that I've been in, the difference in cigars from then till now is literally night and day. Yeah, the, uh, Kevin, that reminds me. Um, I remember we were talking before the show, and you had something that you wanted to bring up tonight with Rocky, and I, I wanted to make sure you did that bef before we ran out of time and forgot about it. Oh, oh sure, and it, this is actually a fun side in Rocky. I don't know if... if if it's a story that can be repeated, I know, I know, um, man, this is going back probably 2019. You were here in Vegas for an event and I was actually, um, doing a small media show with a, a local B and M here. And you told us a story and I can't remember if it was Nicaragua or the Dominican Republic or where it was that you were on a river and, came across no. a soldier that had been, been that had been like i think it was stabbed with a machete or something like that can you can you share that yeah. story because that was that well, was like it, a rocky a, story that's like it, epic it, it, it's a long story it's not a soldier but it was a friend of mine that decided me to take he wanted to show me this new farm he built and uh not built but he found and it was supposed to be a eight hour trip it ended up being six days and uh, it's a very, very long story, but in a nutshell, we ended up uh, on the Coco River, which divides Nicaragua and Honduras. We ended up where the Sandinistas and the Contras were fighting in this little boat, like a Thai boat with pigs and chickens floating down the river. And every 10 minutes, we'd have to get out because the boat would bottom out. And uh, it was hot. It was sweltering. It was lightning. It was raining. Uh, we ended up. Uh, after the third day pulling over to somebody's house trying to get something to eat because we're starving. There was no electricity. This lady had a flashlight that she stuck on her net. We gave her $20. She slaughtered a pig right in front of us. Lost my appetite. Uh, she cooked this pig <laughs> under a flashlight. And then there was like 10 of us from the boat uh, sleeping on these hammocks on the lanai. And at 3 o'clock in the morning, I heard gunshots go off. And next thing I saw, machetes flying, and one of the machetes hit this guy next to me. He was like a 19-year-old kid, right between the mouth. His whole lip was falling down, and I took him to hospital. Uh, back on the... Oh, no. We ended up a farm under a waterfall smoking a cigar and dreadfully to think that oh no what happened uh oh, uh -oh. we lost a mid-story i know we lost a mid-story what happened no <laughs> i was getting so into this i wanted to hear this story 
Hold oh, on, there it's, he is. It's just a great freaking story. I know. Hold on. There I'm, he is. I don't know oh, what happened. Sorry, we lost you. <laughs> so, it, was, it was a crazy story of all time. They, they had the FBI looking for me. They had all the police looking for me. My brothers and everybody was freaked out. I was supposed to be gone for eight hours. And I ended up six days later appearing from this. And uh, a good buddy of mine has this on video somewhere. So that that's going to be a movie somewhere. But it was one of the scariest, crazy experiences. I want to say that was back in 1998, uh, uh, 99. It was nuts. Wow. Uh, there's a lot. There was a lot I saw down there when I went down in 95, 96. The Iran Contra Wars, Ali North, the whole cocaine deals, loading the planes with cocaine. They had these. The CIA had these buildings called the Hot Inns, where they're bringing on arms for the Contras taking the planes loading narcos all of it i saw it lived it it was crazy wow wow so that's a long story i mean I, the <laughs> that was i mean it was a crazy i mean it, it the story is just as entertaining now as it was then and i have to say you know i mean i was a fledgling in the media side i was still relatively new in cigars and i gotta say you know having you tell that story to us as a group and you know, just sitting and smoking cigars and sharing that. I mean, that instantly made me a lifelong fan of Rocky Patel. You know, it's just, I mean, I, don't I, know, could, I'd have, have, I could have I a connection know, to you to be able to share that. that. Like, it was great. Everybody sees me in a suit and tie. They don't see the, uh, the crap that we went through initially when I got into the business and lived down there and we had to make payroll and go to the farms with armed guards and machine guns just to deliver payroll. Uh, it was dangerous. It was nuts. There were landmines everywhere. It was a pretty, pretty uh, sad, tough time. Third world country, just coming out of war, to go down there and start making cigars. And I was thinking to myself, here I'm a lawyer. Gave up this law practice to do this. Why? It was nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I can imagine you just sitting there being like, is it too late to go back to law? I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> we are very happy you persevered, Rocky. Yes, yes. Oh, thank and and hopefully, I don't know, that, that that does sound like one hell of a movie. I, like if that was ever, you know, and that just that whole experience, I, I I can only imagine. I, I'd love to. I'd love to see more of that someday. Yeah, who knows? Who knows Jerry Bruckheimer? That would be a good Jerry Bruckheimer. Movie. Right. Jesus, that's. I mean, I don't know. That that sounds like that, you got a story there. That, that's a good hour hour long story for another time. Um, <laughs> well, Rocky, we're gonna we're just gonna we're gonna hit the the news segment very quickly, and then we'll we'll kind of come back and we'll close out the show with you. Um, but our news is once again brought to you by McAuliffe Cigars. Head over to SmokingTobacco.com today. Check out our review on the McAuliffe Black, rated ninety one by that guy this way that guy, um, and now featuring the McAuliffe Blue which is now going to be available very soon. Um, so the black and the blue, it's a blackout. I don't have a tagline for the blue yet. I'm working on it, though. I'll come up with something. Uh, black and it, blue. It, it's still a, it, it's black and blue, McAuliffe. It's black and blue. Um, we'll play with it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, like <laughs> This week, I'm not really going to do anything too specific on the news um, just because it's really not really been a, a very newsy week. Uh, mostly the last two weeks have been uh, our PCA coverage and everything that's from the trade show. So I'll keep it kind of short and sweet just to make it easy for everybody. And, uh, you know, just head over to the website, um, head over to our YouTube channel, all of our videos, all of our coverage from the trade show. Um, you know, Rocky's here tonight. You know, we, we, we did a great interview with Nish uh, at the booth. So you can check that out and, you know, hear a little bit more about the gold label and uh, the other cigar that I'm going to bring up with Rocky in just a minute when we bring him back in. Um, and, th and that's about it really. So that will do it for the news. And uh, next week we'll kind of get back to our regular scheduled programming there, but let's bring Rocky back on the show. And then I want to ask him about this other cigar that I have in front of me, which it, it seems to me that, and we've talked about this topic a lot on this show, the other show, you know, the Zodiac stuff, right? All the Chinese new year stuff. You know, it was one of those things where I feel like there was a couple people doing it, and a lot of people, you know, you know, know Davidoff comes to mind. They've they've been very successful with their with their Chinese Zodiac New Year releases, um, and this year there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people doing it, and you know, it's um, 
Rocky is, you know, one of those people. And one of the cigars we saw at the trade show is the Year of the Dragon from Rocky Patel, which I do have in front of me here, which is beautifully packaged. I haven't smoked it yet, though, so I, I can't smoke. I can't speak to that, and I'll probably smoke it after the show or sometime this week because it is on my list. But I do have it with me, and Rocky, since you're here, I figured why not talk about it really quickly. Um, you know, I, I believe this is your – is this your first Chinese New Year's cigar? Have you, have you done any it other is ones? Not a first, it's a uh, cigar, but, you know, before I get there, I just want to uh, give my hats off. Uh, I finally got an opportunity to meet the guys from McAuliffe. And what a nice group of guys, really, really good human beings, good people, working hard to launch a good brand. So try the Macau cigars, great people, great guys, and uh, a great family. And, and my hat's off to them. I spent an hour talking to them at the show. I reached out to them. I said, I've heard a lot about you. I know you're new in the industry and they're doing things right. So hats off to them. So uh, really quickly, uh, Year of the Dragon, the reason we did Year of the Dragon Zodiac is we've been approached by Duty Free. Uh, you know, there's a big lack of Cuban cigars out in the European market. Um, they got bought out by a private equity group out of Hong Kong. Uh, most of the product that's coming out of Cuba has been diverted to Cuba. And all the Duty Free places from London to Dubai to uh, Frankfurt, everywhere, their shelves are empty. And so the Duty Free guys are like, please, please, please. I said, well, everyone's got a year of dragon. Now we need one from here. So we really came out with it for duty free. And I said, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right. And and we want to make a great cigar with fantastic packaging. And I think that that packaging is like, wow, it's rich. It's cool. It's collector's item. We only made 5,000 boxes. It's got a beautiful San Andreas wrapper from Mexico. Some of the oldest wrapper that we have. It's got fillers from our farms in Esteli, Condega, Lapa. It's got two different binders, a Connecticut and a Broadleaf binder. It's a rich, decadent cigar with a lot of notes of caramel, coffee, espresso. It's got balance. I think it's special. I think it's a great cigar that you enjoy after a nice meal. So if you haven't tried the year of the dragon, it's just getting ready to ship uh, this week. Uh, try one. There's limited amount of boxes. It's special, and you're going to enjoy it. Yeah, I, I saw that, and I immediately I gravitated. You know, and everyone's done a great job with their packaging. You know, and I think that you know, being a limited edition, you you, you kind of and, and you can speak to this. You know, obviously it, as a manufacturer, I, I feel like when when a company does a, a limited, I think obviously there's a little bit more time and thought put into it because it's it's a special release, it's a special project, and obviously that includes the packaging. And I think a little bit more time and care goes into that, and you want to make it a little, you know exciting because it, it, it is it's special you know and it's there's not as many of them and um it won't be around forever so why not why not make it grand if you're going to do it but yeah i think yeah, that there's item i really believe so oh yeah no i agree and, and you know looking at the band and i i, I don't really want to get too close my camera might unfocus but you know you have that nice long secondary band which i know is something that you know especially the last few years you, know, you guys have done on, on a lot of your stuff um you know i have another i know i have another gold label with me just with the uh, and I know like on the 60 and some of the others, you know, you had that that kind of secondary, you know, long band or the foil or whatever that you guys use, uh, which I think it really dresses up the cigar. But yeah, on the dragon, it's really cool. You guys have the red and the gold. It's very it's very China. It's very Chinese. And the dragon on here, it just it it really pops and it, it's really cool. And yeah, collector's item for sure. I get get some to smoke and then get some to save for later, for uh, when they're gone and you want to revisit it. It's it's kind of always been my rule of thumb. So. Uh, really excited to try that. It's it's going to be cool. Uh, well, Rocky, we are getting towards the end of our show tonight, and I do appreciate your time. I appreciate you being here with us, and you know, there's only so much we can really chat about uh, on one episode. And um, I feel like we, we we got the most <laughs> we got the most out of that we could for the time we had. So thank you for being here. I, I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, everybody. Enjoy. Be safe. Stay healthy, and keep smoking fine cigars. And join Cigar Rights of America. 100% is 25 bucks. 100% of the money goes towards fighting your right and privilege to enjoy fine cigars, fight state taxation, local taxation, and fight the FDA. So thank you, guys. Appreciate you. And look forward to seeing you soon. Absolutely. Thank, thank you, you, Rocky. Thank you, Rocky. Well, guys, that's going to do it for our show this week. Make sure you stay tuned for more of our PCA coverage. Um, 
Don't forget to like and subscribe on all of our platforms and visit thesmokingtobacco.com for more news, reviews, and updates from the cigar industry. We'll see you on Saturday night with Spare Note series with William Cooper and that guy over there and Mr. Kevin Akov. It's going to be uh, another great show with the three of us. We have a lot to say. Um, Kevin, I'm, I'm, I know you're excited about it. So um, it's uh, it, it's always a wild time. But, guys, that's going to do it. We'll see you next week. Take care.